Yes, friends. Good afternoon. Uh, I know it is very difficult to attend the session after this heavy lunch. But what I feel, the members who stay post lunch are always considered as interested audience for the topic. That is my personal perception. So in the last session of today's whole day program, we are moving towards the last panel discussion. I request one of the panelists, uh, CA Mukesh M. Sasar, please come on the dais. CA Nina Mem to come on dais. And also I request moderator, CA Priyanshu, sir, to come on dais. Uh, let me give a brief introduction of, uh, there is no need to give the introduction of Mukesh, sir. If you are in Ahmedabad and if you are knowing Mukesh M. Shah, right? But again, it is a, by protocol, I have to give the introduction. CA Mukesh M. Shah, sir. Yeah. Uh, having age of 71, but he has contributed to the profession more than 47 years. He has been as independent directors to Adani Total Gas, Asian Granito, Adani Infra, Adani Solar, Inspiron Energy, and many other companies. Sir, you have not contributed as independent director, but you, your academic excellence was also there, and you have contributed as a trustees to the various trusts, including MC Sa Commerce College, SR Meta Arts College, CC Sa State College. So with this brief introduction, I would like to invite Preeti Ma'am to join with me for giving him the momento. Please, ma'am. Our another faculty, learned lady, CA Nina Men P. Kapasi. Uh, she is a regular speaker at the various forum. She has contributed to the various articles published by BCAS. She is a member, core group member of Bombay Chartered Accountant uh, Society. She is practicing uh, in the taxation and auditing field. And she came all the way from Mumbai to encourage us and especially the women uh, directors who want to make their career. So I would like to request ma'am to felicitate Nina ma'am. And in the panel discussion, session will not go wisely or I can say smoothly without a proper moderation. And CA Priyanshu sir has uh, given his consent to moderate this session. He has more than 25 years of experience in this field. He has served to the energy, infrastructure, transportation, and logistic, and in many more industries. So with this brief introduction, we would like to felicitate uh, Priyanshu sir with the momento. Now, not taking much of time, I request Priyanshu sir to start the session, sir. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to moderate this esteemed panel. Uh, so I think what we'll try and cover in next one, one and a half hours is, is basically the contribution with, as a board member in different committees, what independent directors can do. We look at the roles and the responsibility of the chairman and the members of in, uh, independent audit committees and the board members. We we'll look at the role of the management and auditors vis-a-vis -vis the independent directors. We'll talk about the financial literacy. And also we'll touch upon uh, topic like sustainability and Gen AI. Uh, some of the questions may be in uh, repetitive nature, but of course we'll have different perspective from this esteemed panel. 
So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll start with uh, Mukesh Bhai. I think just a fun basic question and I think everybody would like to know is uh, considering your experience in various audit committees and board, uh, what are the considerations which a chartered account or an individual needs to take while accepting a board position? First of all, let me thank the institute and organizers for giving me this opportunity to express my views. Priyanshu Bhai, basically, there could be many considerations which one should keep in mind. First of all, the foremost is one should understand the reputation of the promoter group, reputation of the company, the goodwill that promoter and the uh, uh, company has uh, generated in, in, in the society. So that is foremost thing one should consider. But that is not the only thing. The another thing that one should keep in mind that how much I can contribute to the company. Basically, they see everyone has his own skill, expertise, and the knowledge. Everyone has his own strength. Now based on the his strength, based on all these things, he has to decide with, with himself how much I can contribute to the company, whether I can contribute to the company properly or not, whether my knowledge is enough for, for the contribution or not. So that is very important for, because now see the, how much I can contribute, that is very important. So that one should know. The third thing I would say is the financial strength of the company. Basically, the one should check the financial, financials of the last two, three years, check uh, auditor's report basically, is there any qualification? Is there a clean report? Is there any matter of emphasis in, in the auditor's report? How the auditor's uh, CARO report, whether it is proper or not? So that one should go through it. But over and above, three things one should check in detail. One is the director's report. Another is MDA, management discussion analysis. And third is corporate governance report. Now, one should absolutely go with all the three documents. And then he can decide what is the nature of the company, how fast growing companies, what are the compliances companies doing, whether the company is perfectly okay or not. All these things can be judged from those three records that is very, very important. Fourth thing is the, who are the other directors? Who are the other directors that I should see? Now, if I see the profile of other directors, and if I have directors like Priyan Subhain, I would simply say yes, go ahead. So one th should think, who are the directors? and what reputation they have in the society. Are they ethical or not? That is very important for one to decide. And if by chance, if you know someone, then you should contact, let me give my example. In one of the company when I was invited, I con contacted lady director who was a retired IS officer. So when I called, she was not aware that I'm going to call her because my name was discussed in the NRC committee meeting. So I talked to her, I said, madam, Please add, tell us in a very frank and very fair opinion what is the culture of the company, whether management is receptive to our suggestions or not, what are the uh, principles and ethics that they follow. So all these things, that is very important, that one should keep in mind. The fourth thing, and fifth thing rather, is, very, is the time contribution. See friends, one thing is very important, earlier days were gone where the meeting used to be over in, in just 15, 20 minutes. I know one very popular, very leading Indian stylist used to complete the meeting in 10 minutes time. Those days are gone. Now every meeting, see in the large companies, the board meeting takes at least three hours. I'm sure parents will also endorse. And committee meetings, now there are various committee meetings. Now every committee meeting, see in one of the companies where I'm the director, ESG takes at least two hours. ESG meeting takes two hours to discuss the entire report. Now, that was time whether I have, whether my profession is allowing me to spend so much time. So that is one, one has to very clear, uh, clearly understand. Another thing is liability in insurance. Nowadays, see the directors always ask, what is the uh, indemnity? What is insurance cover? that you provide to the uh, director. So that, that one has to be very, very careful. Because insurance cover is now, nowadays, things are going from bad to worse. Now in recent one case, 
Lil Industries L double E L. Every must everybody must be aware of that SEBI imposed the penalty on uh, independent directors. And one independent director was a retired air vice chief Mar uh, chief Mar air marshal. Vice chief marshal uh, retired. Now that person was also levied the penalty of 10 lakhs rupees. So one has to be very careful how much insurance cover is given to me, how much indemnity I have. And the last thing, no, most important thing, whether companies regular in the compliance or not. Compliance is very, very important. Nowadays, everywhere compliance is, compliance is there. Now all compliance is whether they are properly uh, carried out or not. And the last thing, and just, just sake of uh, thing, once we uh, find out who are the auditors, who are the lenders, who are my legal advisors, who are my secondary auditor, now whether they are a reputed uh, a person or not. Now, all this put together, when you decide all these factors, then one, one can decide, should I join the company or should I not join the company? It is not necessary that once you are, in, you are invited, you should join. There are instances which I know where person has politely said no, sir, because of certain reason, I don't want to join. So not necessary that I should join immediately when I'm told. So that is very important according to me, President Swain. No, no, thank you, Mukesh I think you, uh, while a uh, couple of pointers, I mean, we've been discussing since morning to say that we need to do a KYC for the company, we need to look at the annual reports, we need to look at the liability clauses, etc. But two or three points which you, you, you said was so valid to say that am I as an individual being relevant to that particular board, both in terms of my experience in that particular industry, as well as the time commitment which I can devote to do my duty of care as per the requirements of the law. So I mean, these are the two very important points which you have raised, which we all need to consider as we move forward. Inabin, your thoughts on that? I, I would surely endorse Mukesh Pai's views. And whatever he has said, definitely I'll go with it. But only one thing I would add to it, that is the company's mission, does it align with my values? Say, for example, being a Jain, I would never invest in a company which deals in non-veg products. So surely the company may be very good with excellent financial uh, and excellent co corporate governance. But because the company's mission does not align with my inner values, I would surely not op go for it. That is means karyu karaviu ananumodiu. So I will surely not go. Otherwise, definitely I agree with whatever Mukesh Bhai has stated. And at the outset, I am really thankful for ICAI and Ahmedabad branch for giving me this opportunity to this wonderful city of Ahmedabad. Thank you. Thank you, Nina Ben. Mukesh Bhai, again, uh, uh, since, since you talked about the composition and, and what are the prerequisites which we as an individual would like to have in ourselves to be part of the board. Uh, if I take that question which is related to that to say that, okay, as a chairman, uh, once you are on the board as a chairman, uh, how do you feel that do a chairman of an audit committee uh, takes a larger responsibility or a role in, in getting those resolutions reviewed, looked at the in underlying data information which has been provided for and, and do the chairman also need to ensure that there is a larger board-wise uh, participation from the other board members around it? So what's your view around that as a chairman of the board? See, uh, frankly speaking, let's understand one thing, that chairman, whether of the board or whether chairman of the audit committee or any committee, takes that greater responsibility. His responsibility is definitely uh, higher than the member, but I will come to that point later on. So the chairman responsibility is definitely uh, higher. He has to take the responsibility for the chairmanship of, of the committee or of the board. See, basically, chairman sets the ball rolling. That is, he calls the meeting. First, then in the meeting, he takes the proceedings taking uh, forward taking uh, to a, an, another step. Next, he should ensure, he should ensure two things in the meeting. Number one, there is a smooth interaction and smooth involvement of all members. That is where if this is the essential part of the chairman's uh, uh, commitment. And then 
he ultimately signs the balance sheet. That I mean, signs the minutes. Sorry, but apart from these are general thing which we know. But chairman's role would be, chairman role would be number one. He sets the agenda, so he organizes the meeting based on the agenda that is decided by him. So agenda is mostly approved by the chairman. Number one thing, then he has to facilitate discussion in in the meeting. Now in in the meeting, he should ensure. That everyone takes participate. What principal said is correct. Everyone should take uh, part, uh, take participate in the meeting. And generally, it is known. It is we say all voices should be heard. That is a very common word. All voices should be heard in in the meeting. So everyone should be allowed to speak. What we speaks, that should be the respected. That should be uh, taken in in the right spirit. So that is very important part uh, responsibility for, of the chairman. Third is compliance. Now he should ensure, chairman should ensure that board adheres, adheres to the governance. That is very important and follows and uh, complies with the regular the legal requirements and the, 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 the legal laws of, uh, of the uh, country. That is very important. So compliance it is the responsibility of the chairman. And third, fourth is uh, fifth is the sorry fourth is the leadership. That is very very important. A good industrialist. There are so many industrialists we have in the country now. So good industrialists will always provide the leadership to the, to the board. And he ensures and gives the guidance to the, all the uh, uh, members on the particular topic. So that is the main role. And the last one, and very important, he has to start the meeting on time and he has to end the meeting on time. That's very important because with, uh, one by one meetings are already fixed. So he has to ensure that meeting starts on time and meeting ends on time. Next point, to ensure that every member, see another point which I just forgot to tell you, but very important, please understand, that for all the actions taken, for all the decisions taken in the board, there's a collective responsibility of, of the entire board. So that is very important. So collective responsibility of the entire board for all the actions taken, decisions taken in the board, that is the very important point to understand. Another point, see, the chairman should ensure that there's active participation of the, of the board. So what he should do for that? Number one and foremost, that he must send the agenda well in time. Now, there are some companies who send the agenda just 24 hours before the meeting. Now, no one is that free to check the agenda in the, in the night or in the evening. That's not possible. I mean, few th exceptions are always there, but at least two, three days in advance, Agenda should be circulated, so everyone has a time to go through. And once a person is going through the agenda, he can discuss, he can deliberate on all the points. That is very important. So if a person is prepared, it is always presentation, discussion is different. A person coming without uh, uh, knowledge, and a person coming without knowledge. There is a vast difference which everyone knows. So that is a very important point. Another thing is which I told you, engagement. See, he must ensure free and fruitful discussion. That is very important. Fruit and free and fruitful discussion. Another point is, he should ensure that everyone gives the input in, in, in the meeting. Now, two, three points I just tell based on my experience. Based on my experience. See, so many times, the board goes on discussing topics which are not relevant or which are out of agenda which are not important, or maybe repetitive discussion going on, or sometimes long, long, long discussions going on. So all these things bound to be human beings are human beings. Human beings are human beings. So unwanted discussion, out of agenda discussion, repetitive discussion, held several times in, in the board. So that chairman should ensure that all these things should not happen. That is very, very important point for the chairman to decide. Another thing that is very important, I tell you, give my example, one, in one case, Priyan Subhai. In five, six meetings, I observed that one gentleman was either remaining absent or if he attends a meeting, he will not take part, much part in the discussion. I thought something is, it's not proper. So I called him, I drink tea in your house. Modi sahab ka point hai chai pe charcha, to me chai pe phaltu charcha karne aapka gharata hoon. 
So I, I went to his house, discussed with him, and found out why, why he's not taking part in the discussion. Because when you a member, you have to contribute. In the first point I said, when you member, when you accept the membership of a board, you have to perform. You have to give the base to the company also. So you have to contribute to the company. That, that I just tell. And then, then he realized that, uh, that he discussed some of his issues. But then every time in the board meeting, at the community meeting, I used to ensure, I used to ask questions to him. I was to uh, uh, tell him, yes, yes, very good, very good. Yes, this can be discussed like this, this could be discussed like this. So I made him participate in the discussion. So that I feel very happy. But anyway, so that chairman role is there. Another thing, very important, which most of all the companies does, that they fix their budget, I mean, annual plan in, in advance. All the meetings of the year, I decided well in advance. First quarter, this, second quarter, this, third quarter, AGM is this, third, uh, 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 second AGM, this. The, uh, so all the entire board, uh, if there's urgent meeting, short notice, then it's a different story. Today only I had uh, one urgent meeting for compliance of, of law, but th that is a different story. But point is that if the calendar is decided well in advance, Everyone knows that on which date I have to remain present. So he can book his calendar. He can write down his calendar. There's this, this date. Uh, uh, on this date, I have to attend this board meeting. So that is very important. So all these things one should keep in mind. And two things, friends, I would just like to tell you from my experience. I will give examples also. In the, in the committee and board, members should be open to accept new ideas, new thinking, new, new uh, issues. Out of box suggestions. I tell you, in one of the cases, impairment was discussed. Now, auditor was presenting, I was discussing, and then a director having technical background. He said, All this is okay because you are talking about accounting standard, requirement, legal requirement, so I, I don't want to discuss on this point. But technically, this plant can it be called as impaired? Then he gave the technical data. Technical data is such a very good input he gave that we all were puzzled what to do. But ultimately, since accounting standard was slightly in favor of the auditor, slightly in favor of the implement, we did it. But out of box suggestion that he gave. Another thing I would just discuss, in the, in the meeting, one should not be aggressive. Very aggressive, one should not be defensive. I give you one example. One of the case, the asset was held for sale. Asset was held for sale. Now, when the asset is held for sale, you don't you take out from the fixed asset proper plant equipment and so it is in in the under heading current asset. Now, one of the board one of the members here, no, I will not allow my plant land building to be shown as current asset. It is not current asset. You all are rubbish. And then he become very aggressive. Then first auditor tried to convince him. Then I also tried to convince him. But then he was very clear, adamant. So the aggressive is not required. Then ultimately one has to use the veto power, so not veto, but sort of veto power, and convince him that, sir, this is a requirement of law, and one has to do it. This, though it is land building, but when it is held for sale, we are going to sell in another, uh, in next quarter, the deed is final. Deal is final, it is about to be sell. Then ultimately, one has to use the veto power. So that aggressiveness should not be kept. And defensive, so much defensive. On critical matter, challenging matter, one should not do it. So these are my personal views. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. No, no, Mukesh, you have well uh, summarized the quality of a leader. Uh, and as you rightly said, the chairman of the board or audit committee or any committee to act as a leader where, where he balances uh, the need of an hour, motivate the members to speak up, tell their views and thought process, and, uh, and conduct the meeting as per the requirement. So I think it's, it is a well-balancing act which, which the chairman needs to do. And of course, it's linked to their leadership qualities. So I mean, you have summarized it quite well, Mukesh Bhai. Nina, what your views on this? Yeah, two things which I would like to add. One is regarding this, yes, ethical responsibility lies with the uh, chairman of the audit committee, chairman of the member. But legal responsibility is equally shared by all the members. Mm. 
So there is no, uh, as far as this chairmanship is, is concerned, there is no additional burden on that. Yes, ethically he is responsible. In case of, you know, when they, they have to deal with the external agencies also, he be, his face will be visible, his name will be visible. In, because he, he has dealt he, as a chairman. But legally all the directors will be responsible. And to that extent, you know, I would say that independent directors are not full-time uh, connected with the company. You know, we just go for four meetings or six meetings in a year. But then also, as far as companies, corporate governance is concerned, we as an independent directors are equally responsible along with reg uh, whole time directors and regular di executive directors. So that one has to consider. Now regarding Mukesh Pai's uh, uh, comment on receipt of agenda items just a day earlier, you know, this was also happening with the company where I am associated with. And it was so used to happen that you are not familiar with the company's day to day working. And uh, earlier day, you know, you get 500 pages. And as a like a true professional, you know, you would like to go each and every uh, sentence in that agenda item. And my mother-in-law, she used to ask me, Kale tarika exam che, atlu bhane che, you know? So it, it was you know, rather, you know, you were not even able to do justice in that, uh, you know, six, seven, eight hours you put in. So I literally wrote to the company's management very in stern language that this is absolutely not done thing you have to give us before five working this, you know. So then they realized, and chain reaction starts, no? because when you tell the management, they have to call with the internal audit, um, internal auditor, statutory auditor. And then it started with, you know, three days, then lit and after that four days, and now five working days we have started. So, so you sometimes you have to be vocal and you have to be demanding for the betterment of the company only, and of course to do the justice to whatever work which we have undertaken. Yeah. So, just a moment. See, I tell you friends, see, in big companies, large companies, the board agenda runs into 200 pages. Then all committee meetings, maybe 40, 50, 60 pages. Now four or five committees. So 60 pages, 240 plus 200, uh, so 500 pages to read in one hour, one day. It's not possible. Yeah, so what Nina Ben said is fine, absolutely correct what I also said. That at least three to four days in advance. If it's there, you can go through and apply your mind. That was the very important point. Sorry. No, no, I think um, uh, Nina Ben, you, you summarized it quite well to say that, of course, ethics is, is something which as a chairman would actually drive throughout the board yeah. meetings and on to the board kind and corporate governance and one of the point which you said about the agenda with Mukesh Bhai also said I think as an independent director we also needs to be clear to say that this is something which I need it and this is good for the company and good for making my decisions mm -hmm. so it's not like a company is doing some kind of an obligation it's a requirement and somewhere we as independent directors also needs to push to that it is our right as well yes. as our duty. Correct, correct. Well said, ma'am. Well said. And and I mean, just taking that forward, I mean, the agendas. I mean, there are multiple matters which gets reflected into those agenda papers, which needs to be reviewed. I mean, some of them which we discussed in the morning around uh, the policies and procedures followed, and uh, how you apply your due diligence around it. Both Mr. Ramesh as well as Dinal Bhai talked about it. Uh, Preeti Bin talked about related party transactions, transaction with subsidiary companies, loans granted, taken, interest, prejudicial, etc. So I think I just wanted to pick your thoughts, Nina Bin, on on couple of that uh, board items in terms of how challenging it is in the current scheme of things to review and take an objective decisions. I mean, if I look at some of the examples, maybe related party transactions, yeah. subsidiary company transactions. Uh, approving fundraise, monitoring those because these are actually cash outflows and inflows yeah, yeah. coming in, frauds, whistleblowers, which is which is becoming quite common right now, with the kind of policies which has been rolled out on on the large uh, listed companies. So, just pick your thoughts on that, Nina. Ben, on so this, in especially in audit committee, the main item, you know, over and above that, reviewing audit uh, audited accounts and. Uh, um, uh, forwarding to board committee for adoption and audit report etc review there are few items which are which requires our immense attention you know that first and foremost is of course related party transactions 
we all are aware, you know, that with NFRI coming heavily on this, you know, and uh, the penalty is also sizable, and secondly, you lose the face in your profession is also something very scary. So that one has to go through this related party transactions very minutely, and uh, it is not possible when you are an independent auditor to go through each and every item. So first, the one has to see whether the process is fully laid down, whereby how the related party is defined, and uh, what transaction should take place in case of a related party transaction, what benchmark you have to apply for uh, arm's length uh, pricing, and how it should be reported and to whom it should be reported. So all those processes, whether they are in place, then one has to uh, check that. I'll share my one thing, you know, when in company where I was associated, they, were, uh, they are uh, heavily into CSR, before even 2014 when it became mandatory. And they have their own CSR uh, uh, projects. So one fine day they have given some sizable donation to uh, Lions Club for carrying out medical camp. So naturally as an audit committee chairman I ask why, why do you have given to this particular uh, club instead of doing yourself? Are you related to this? So this, uh, the CFO inquired with the management and said they, no they are not related. But related in the term, you know, that related is such a broad term, you know, when you look at Companies Act, Section 276, it's a different. And when you look at Indias, then it is a different. So then when I went, then I thought, you know, this, they are missing something. Surely there is no ma mal intention as such, but they are missing something. So I went into that Lions Club web page, and I found out that um, uh, managing director's wife, she was on the trust board. So then I immediately pointed out that this is something related party transactions, please ratify it, and they have ratified it. So there can be a simple, you know, miss also, and maybe not perception, of, uh, I mean, matching. So one has to go through this related party transactions very, and secondly, arm's length pricing, whether it is matching, what benchmark you are applying, that also one has to see. Now coming to fraud and whistleblowers policy, that is also something one has to take care. And especially when the world is of these virtual transactions, digital transactions, the chances of fraud has increased so much that one really don't know where we can miss. And secondly, when the company is expanding expon exponentially, one really don't know, you know where the fraud can take place. So whether that policies, basically policies and processes one has to see, and what is the uh, agency or what is the department which will take care of this. And whistleblowers, uh, policy, whether it is properly published, whether there is a mechanism whereby an employee or any outside agency can report for this, any wrongdoings in the financial transactions or otherwise, whether there can be confidentiality given to this kind of reporting, what are the follow-up actions which have been uh, taken care of. And so the entire mechanism also one has to check up. So these two things are there. And secondly, as he has pointed out, that CapEx. That also one has to see. And how, if it is a substantial, then if you have to uh, raise the capital or raise this uh, loan funding also, then as a financial uh, entity, like we are all financial professionals as a chartered accountant, we are a good judge to advise, you know, whether what should be the cost of capital, whether you should take long term, short term, or whether you should use it from your own resources. So. Basically, I feel as an independent auditor, you know, the, uh, independent director, your role is not only in a tick box approach, you know, that you do it, that no, no, this governance is done, you know, this is done, this is done, this legality is formed. Basically, you have to go beyond that and give a well, lot of value addition to the business as such, but within that framework of, you know, legal legality and compliances. So, Again, as a chartered accountant with financials and legal background, we can do a good justice into it. So these are the main uh, roles, you know, which we have to perform in this, at least audit committee. Yeah. Mukesh Bhai, you want to? I don't know. See, uh, I agree uh, with the Nina Ben, but I would like to just add a few things of my personal views. See, uh, Priyanshu Bhai, since you are very much involved if, uh, in the auditing and you are there for the last 25 years with a very big firm. See, my personal view, absolutely my personal view, the responsibility of audit committee is larger 
then the statute auditor, so far as RPT are concerned, related parties are concerned. See, auditor responsible, I understand. But responsibility wise, if you see, the morally, audit committee has more power, more uh, data, more papers, more records available. They can force company to provide the data, data to them. So responsibility of audit committee is larger than auditor, so far as RPT is concerned, that is my absolutely personal view, absolute personal view. Another thing, very, what is important is that, see, uh, once RPTs are carried out, we ask for justification. Whether this transaction is justified or not. When you are doing, Nina rightly said, benchmarking. Now, justification we always ask. Whether, how, how it is justified. Whether it is required to be entered into or not. If it, yes, what is justification? That one has to give very clearly. Another most important, omnibus approval. The first thing most important is uh, one has to be very careful in omnibus approval. Once om omnibus approval is taken, then, then uh, every uh, board meeting it is uh, repeated, it is uh, with the omnibus approval. So when it comes to omnibus approval, one has to be very, very careful. And that is now, see, RPT, Everybody is very, very skeptical, very, very the, 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 uh, uh, attached with that transaction, whether it is shareholder, whether it is lender, whether it is SEBI, whether it is stock exchange, everyone scrutinizes the RPT, related party transactions in detail. So auditor has to be, I mean, the uh, audit committee has to be very careful. So while giving omnibus approval, they have to be very, very careful that everything is carried out. Another thing that what Nilam also said, that ensure that RPT, as per SEBI uh, listing, as per accounting standard AS, as per the uh, uh, Companies Act, uh, every, all the things are carried out properly. Uh, they're reporting in one of the cases, uh, uh, they uh, used as per, it was oh, Indian accounting standard, they used to uh, term as party as a control, as per Indian accounting standard, after two, three, four, after one year, when I checked the balance sheet, I realized that the party may not fall in, in the in the control thing. When I discussed the CFO said, we up up the control karti na kamni. Apne control kete to apne ko control mein aayega na. Then I discussed, I saw look accounting standard, Indian accounting standard, and he realized, oh, I don't fall in the control. So that that one has to take care. That is very important. And most important, is it required to be entered into? Is it fair, in fairness, whether RPT is proper or not? In fairness, fairness is much, much, much higher than the uh, legal duty. So fairness, that is very important so far as that is concerned. So far as the whistleblower and the fraud is concerned, they are very, very serious. Both the things are very serious. One has to ensure that company has a robust system for detection Number one, detection, investigation, and, and reporting, and reporting. So three things has to be a very robust system, one is to all the three things. Now, see, when fraud has taken place, something is wrong. Something is wrong, some loophole is there. Now, what is that loophole? Whether that loophole is plugged or not. That's very important. Now, there is one problem in Gujarati, those who are Gujarati will understand. Problem in Gujarati, dosi maran wanto nathi. The cause which causes the fraud, whether that is removed or not. Cause which causes the fraud, whether that, removed, that is removed or not. That is very important to take care of that thing. So that is very important thing. Now, if, if it is required to be reported to uh, central government as per section 143.12, whether it is reported or not, that audit committee has to take care. That is very important thing. Whistleblower. Again, very important thing. Whistleblower, if it is actual harassment, whistleblower, one has to be very, very, very careful, very, very careful. Because so many things we hear we, in the newspaper, in the media, we hear. So that has to be very, very careful. Please ensure so when a person is giving the whistleblower, he, he has always fear that he will be dismissed. He will be targeted. He will not be given promotion. So always he is under fear. Give that atmosphere in the company. That if you give whistleblower, 
you will not be harassed. You will not be penalized. You will not be punished. But if it is correct, it, you will be rewarded. Something like that, it, 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 people will appreciate. So that is very important. So that system has to be implemented in a company of no fear, no hesitation in reporting the whistleblower. That is very important. And so far as the subsidy companies you said, always ensure that subsidy company adheres to the policies, practices, and corporate governance of the parent company. Now, accounting standard, I mean, accounting policies, and all other SOP manuals, everything, what your parent is following, that should be followed by the subsequent. If you see the multinational companies, which Priyansh will agree, that, that one company is in Netherlands or say in, in USA, the parent company has, has framed the policies. Now, those policies, Indian company has to follow. So that subsidiary company must follow those practices, procedures, manual of the holding company, the parent company. So these are my views on that. No, no, no. Point taken, Mukesh Bhai. And before I take on the NAFRA point, which you said, Nina, I mean, this has been a real challenge for most of the independent directors of the large old course in terms of how the subsidiary company oversight is, is brought into picture by, by the management into, into their audit committees as a such. So any thoughts on that, Nila, when we, before I talk on NIFR and NAPRA? See, in, case this, uh, in short span of two, three hours, you know, which uh, audit committee takes with at least 15 agenda regular items, and subsidiary reports, you know, which is normally audited by some statutory auditor, you know, if, uh, the, if it is uh, subject to audit, then very difficult to evaluate the subsidiary's uh, uh, particular transactions and to go into detail. But generally, when the company is uh, progressive enough and proactive enough, and when they are discussing the performance done by the uh, subsidiary, along with uh, fin financials numbers, one normally discuss in detail that this, what are the issues which can take place, you know, especially there also the related party transactions can be an issue, uh, and uh, transfer pricing again can be an issue. So all those, yes, one has to be, but yes, that caution is always there, and one is always skeptical enough you know, whether I have done justice as far as transactions with subsidiary, transactions of subsidiary companies are concerned. Yeah, yeah, and I agree with you, Nina Ben, uh, because I mean it depends upon the industry in which also you yeah. operate, right? If you are in an infrastructure or an energy company, most of your investments and projects comes out of subsidiary companies, and Holco is just kind of an investment company. So that where I think the diligence would be slightly different than a routine manufacturing company which has a couple of plants here and there or an ancillary work which happens in, in subsidiary companies. Sure, and the things become more difficult when the company in which the subsidiary com are operating, you know, if they are in some different countries, countries where these similar accounting standards are not applicable, or take a case of UAE, where there are hardly any accounting standards, you know, so one is always skeptical enough whether, but one has to live with this risk. <laughs> see, the, uh, just one, the principle, one thing, what I, 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 I'm doing, see, as per the law, in material subsidiary, uh, the one member of the body is also a member, uh, member there. So I always discuss for all material subsidiaries in the meeting, that director, so please tell us about the major highlights of that company and uh, uh, how it is going on. Yeah. And then the minutes of the, 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 that company also comes, but reading the, those minutes may not be possible, but discussing in the board, the mem uh, our board member, who is a member in this material subsidiary, what are the highlights of that company? Th that gives the correct idea. Yeah, and, and even regulators nowadays are expecting independent directors of the holding company to actually look at the financial numbers and the performance of the subsidiary companies. And they have some kind of a moral responsibility around that. So it is something which is quite burning right now, as Dina Ben said. We need to find a solution to it in a slow and steady manner, I suppose. I mean, I'll just then go to the next one. Uh, Nina, when you talked about NAFRA. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the current, uh, uh, if, if, if I recollect, uh, the current chairman spoke about talking to independent directors on, on their roles and their expectations and how they, they look at the financial numbers kind of it. 
So I have one question. I mean, so NAFRA has advised that the reliance on auditors alone may not be sufficient, right? And that is not the only way the independent directors can discharge their responsibility on the financial reporting and the oversight on the same. So what do you think audit committees needs to do to meet these expectations? One, of course, from the regulator's standpoint and other from the stakeholders and the large, large in investor community as such. See, NAFRA and ICAI now, in fact, you know, the, there is a greater clarity in both the roles, uh, respective roles of ICAI and NIFRS. And it is more or less perceived that, you know, whatever is the manage member's competence or member's development and uh, providing technical uh, assistance for the accounting and auditing matters will be provided by ICI, whereas the well, looking that independent oversight and maintaining that professional ethics and uh, punishing these wrongdoings in financial reporting is a, a jurisdiction of NAFRA. So more or less the uh, roles have been uh, demarketed and uh, both the institutions are moving towards you know fair financial reporting uh, to check, you know, that whether corporate governance is properly uh, followed or not, you know. So now coming to this, you know, if you consider that, you know, you are relying on auditor, statutory auditor, independent auditor, independent directors, or otherwise com company as such is really, no, uh, independent directors are relying on independent auditors, whether it is sufficient. So generally one should think you know that independent uh, auditor when they are giving true and fair view considering their expertise and considering the legal responsibility under which they are doing it should be sufficient but considering this the way things are moving forward it may not be sufficient so what one should do it you know one has to go beyond this uh, plain you know letters and basically you have to expand your roles as a as a independent director so how you do it so first, so as it is in your committee, you involve chartered accountants or CFO or uh, someone with a financial expertise mm -hmm. of others. So they will be able to guide us and improve your also financial literacy and other members who may not be directly or indirectly connected with accounting and financials, you know, by giving notes on this. You have your regular, normally what happens in for all practical uh, purposes, I think Mukesh Bhai will agree. You just have one meeting with an audit committee with statutory auditor, and that's sufficient. He presents that accounts, uh, audited accounts, and he presents his report, and now the matter is over. But I think it is not sufficient, you know, and not, not sufficient to discharge your responsibilities. So it is necessary that you check audit plan. You, uh, along with CFO, whether it is proper to take care of everything. You meet external aud uh, statutory auditor before this audit committee meeting takes place and talk about, you know, whatever the issues they have come across in uh, this following accounting standards, in this uh, accounting entries, you know, whether they have it as the company is doing well or there may be divergent issues, there may be gray areas where the company has taken one stand and the auditor has taken other stand. So how it has been reported. So. And in the when you allow also auditor to give proper presentation, rather not allow, rather you see to it that he presents this entire matter very well, and especially calm that key asset, uh, key audit matters have been explained well in this audit committee meeting. So at least members are conversant, and if there are any things which we as an independent auditor have missed, independent director have missed, then it we can be discussed and debated upon. So surely just relying that, okay, you know, statutory auditors a report aa gaya hai, true and fair view hai, unqualified lagta nahi hai, kyunki 500 pages ka report padne ke liye bhi kisi ke paas time nahi rehta hai. So then, you know, just don't go through this, invite the discussion, invite the debate, and even Allah insists that CFO should also give some remarks on his own on that entire audit processes. So that's how it is. And secondly, you see to it that auditor is really independent. It is not for the independence sake, you know. You, so you see whether that auditor, uh, how much he is earning from, uh, from other services, you know. 
So then you can justify whether that auditor is really independent, it should not miss for namesake. So that is also a second consideration and you see to it that audit partner or auditors, of course you know they retire by rotation, but even audit partners are also changing so there should not be too much of familiarity with the management. So these are the my few of the suggestions. And of course internal, one more thing, internal controls and internal audit report also one has to see whether, you know, there is any lacuna which is there, you know. Yeah. Yes, so see, uh, I fully agree with Nina Ben. Just two things I would to add my personal views. See, what happens that in a big companies, audit committee of two hours, three hours, and in three hours, three hours is also it, it, uh, very few companies must be holding the uh, audit committee, which Priyanshubai will agree. But see, in two, three or four hours, discussing entire audit committee agenda, internal auditor report, statute audit uh, presentation, then accounts presentation, and then keeping concentration for four hours, frankly speaking, friends, it is not feasible. I mean, most of the time it is not feasible. So what we have introduced, we have introduced in mean, two audit committees two audit committees. Okay. One audit committee prior to the board meeting and one audit committee on the date of uh, uh, board meeting. So first audit committee, then uh, board comes. So we have two audit committees. In first audit committee, we discuss all the points, including internal auditors. So that internal auditors and entire board agenda is discussed in first audit meeting. And second day, full the three hours, we discuss Auditor's presentation for one one and a half hour and one and a half hour presentation for the from by the CFO or CEO. I mean that is always CFO. So president of CFO is very important. So discussing, see, reliance on outside auditor is always there. But this we have to reduce what Nafra says. Nafra chairman said just before the, the few days that reliance should be reduced. That's I agree. I fully agree. But then two audit committees. I think maybe one solution. Another, what I did in the, one of the companies, that I enhanced the role of internal auditors. Because see, the scope is decided by audit committee. So in ERB or SAB, there are so many points which are not plugged, or that it is not fully integrated, not fully implemented. So some lacuna is there, and then one can play the fraud like that. So that auditors' uh, the reliance can be reduced to that extent. and. In large companies, in PSU or in banks or other uh, large companies, they have a system of two auditors, joint auditors. So th if that is there, then also it, it, it gives some uh, 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 thing for the, uh, the uh, audit committee. And most important, now the presentation by the management, by CFO should be more in detail. If you want to reduce reliance, the presentation by CFO, all the accounting ratios, all the, the other things has to be presented, and that has to be discussed in detail. So if you do then, reliance on reliance state auditors can be reduced to some extent. These are my views over and above what Nina Ben no, no, said. Thank you, thank you, Mukesh Bhai. I mean, going back to Nina Ben, I think you raised a valid question in terms of auditors' independence, right? So what is your view on auditors' independence in context to the non-audit services and uh, the Section 144 of the Companies Act, 144 of the Companies Act, and the recent uh, NAFRA orders around that. So Section 144 explicitly restricts auditors from uh, providing certain non-audit services. There are eight categories. Yeah, these are totally prohibited, where you cannot uh, provide uh, to holding company, to subsidiary companies. Uh, directly or indirectly. But yeah, there is uh, associate companies are outside the purview. Uh, and you cannot provide accounting and bookkeeping services. You cannot provide internal audit. You cannot provide design and implementation of financial information systems, actuarial services, investment advisory service, investment banking services, and outsource financial services and management services. All those services you cannot provide. But yes, management consultancy services are different than management services, and there can be, if it is really relating to consultancy uh, and uh, not falling into management services, then one can still provide it. 
and you really and your uh, this financials require that there has to be a separate mention of auditor getting audit fees and for other matters also separately that one has to disclose but finally when you say independent then independence has to be not only in letters it has to be really ethically and uh, literally it has to be maintained you know to ma manage to uh, get that proper accounting uh, financial accounting and integrity of the financial accounting maintained for maintenance we need to have independence of auditor and uh, that's how you know you should not provide these additional services correct correct Mukesh, what do your views on this recent NAFRA orders on independent and non-audit services, which is talk of the town right now? <laughs> See, NAFRA, as we all know, we are reading in the newspaper and so many of our institute uh, 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 literature magazines. See, NAFRA is very, very strict on the non-audit services. Anyway, it is, as per the law also, Companies Act also, 144 is very clear. Nina Ben also narrated eight uh, services which cannot be performed. In a way, it is correct thing. Independence of auditor is real, real important. Even in our country and outside the India also, in Western countries also, independence of auditor is very much highly appreciated. Now, let us accept reality. I mean, accept reality. Dependence on one or, or two or three clients. Dependence on one or two or three, one, two or three clients, maybe 70 percent, 80 percent revenue coming from all the th or one or two or three clients. Naturally, it is. I mean, not, no, no, not in all. It's a fair point. It's a not fair all, point. but yeah. chances are fairly good. The independence can be jeopardized. So that is very important. So if you provide non-audit services, then you may be tempted, tempted to favor the client. And once you favor the client, independence is lost. And in profession, friends, independence is very, very important. Now, when we, when we give the presentation as statute auditor in the audit committee, or in audit committee, when a statute auditor is giving presentation, the first, first slide he will give is about independence. Correct. correct. He, he will give the first slide that how independent we are. Not only the firm, but the uh, other expert, like say, Texas department, Income, income tax department, GST department, information technology department, because we also take the advice of the IT department, whether those persons are independent or not. So that also we give presentation to the audit, audit committee. So that is very important. So friends, this is very important for us also. Dependence on two, three clients, yes, practically is difficult. I tell you about, let me admit in the presence of everyone that Initially, I was having the same thing. I had some fear, but tell, I tell you, friends, just develop the courage. Friends, we are very, very frank yeah, yeah. to admit. Once you develop courage, God is always there. And that dependence has already broken, and I'm, I thank God. So that is very important. Indep without independence, we should not practice. That is very, very important. That's my absolute Correct. personal view. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mukesh. By the staying. And I just one thing. See, uh, as uh, as I know, big four and other companies they don't accept even IT income tax services also. They they don't take the income tax services also filing return. They also don't take. So, as per them, this is also part of the non audit uh, uh, services. So that I appreciate that thing. So, Mukesh, uh, staying on to the auditors, uh, and your views also on this is that. Uh, what kind of interaction uh, is useful with the management and the auditors outside the audit committee? And what would be that kind of topics which, which, which should be discussed in these kind of, I would, I would call it as a private meeting, but technically it's not private, but just like a meeting independently with management as well as auditors. I think Prafulbhai also said in the morning in terms of he is also encouraging such kind of meetings with auditors without management. So what's your view on that? See, frankly speaking, it is a very healthy practice, very good corporate governance to have closed door meeting of the audit committee members and the auditors. That is without presence of the company executives. So closed door meeting is very, very essential. Generally, in closed door meeting, three things generally uh, 
I'll discuss. One is about the auditor findings. Another is management performance. And third area of risk that auditor is observing. So these are the three major points they discuss. That, and then it has to be, you see, one thing, my friends, we all know, we all are auditors. If something is wrong in the company, we are the first person to find out. Whosoever sitting here can very well find out that what is wrong in the company, where something uh, uh, NK is going on. So we as auditor very well know that where is wrong, wrong thing is going on. So anybody sitting here or every professional or every professional brother can find out very easily. So in that meeting, auditor in should give indication, tell the uh, audit committee members about his findings. That is very, very important. That is very important. Now, another thing, see, in one of my companies where I'm the, I was statutory term, the audit committee chairman used to call me one day prior. Suppose the, the meeting is today, he will, he will come one day prior to Ahmedabad. He will call me one to one and discuss about my audit report. What are the major observations of in, in my, see, he used to discuss my audit presentation also, PPT. He used to discuss my PPT uh, in detail used to understand what time observations, and then what are, if there are matter of emphasis, if there are qualifications, that also used to discuss, and discuss absolutely in detail. So that, there, there I was acting as a statute editor, but I'm saying about the audit committee chairman in, in that company. Another thing, if there's a deviation in accounting policies, that used to discuss very, very clearly. No deviation should be there. If deviation is there, why it is uh, carried out? That is very important. And friends, now we all, all know there are 11 accounting ratios we give in, in the accounts. Now, those accounting ratios, if there is any, any change, material change we have to report, those deviations should be discussed with the auditor in detail. Why, why all the major uh, ratios are there. So that ratio should be discussed. So that is very, very important. And Discussion should be very ideal, friends. It should be free and fair. And one thing was that audit committee chairman used to ask me, Mukesh bhai, aapko free access hai ki hai? Are you getting all records or not? Do you have free access to uh, all the records of the company or not? If I say yes, then he's satisfied. Or if I said slightly, if my voice is slightly down, friends, bhai, such a great personality. If my voice is slightly down, then he will catch hold of me. And sorry, Mukesh, just a moment. Just tell me, I, I'm not happy with your voice. So that, that they used to do it. With the management, the, it is very important. See, See, with management, you should discuss about the compliance matter. The strategic risk, what are strategic risks that we have? Now, risk committee uh, is very important, you know very well. In the risk committee, there are also four or five risk committees that uh, uh, most of the companies they have. So all the risk th that wants to discuss, operational issues, that is very important. That one must discuss operational issues, issues with the management in detail. Because see, every, see in the board, the mix of everything. Some is expert on finance, some is expert on legal matters, some is expert on technical matters, some is expert on XYZ. In one of the companies, one is expert on the CSR. One person is absolutely dedicated to CSR. So all this mix is there. So then you discuss the operation issues. Only very few persons can take part, but that, that is also possible. And most important, scope of improvement in the corporate governance. Scope of improvement in corporate governance, that is very, very important. That, that how in, we can increase the scope, that is very important. And last thing, being auditors, being a uh, uh, charter account, being the uh, taxes in the background, I used to advise about taxes and planning also. <laughs> in one of the companies, after the one year, I realized that companies paying too much taxes. So I talked to chairman uh, in, in the informal meeting that, sir, we are paying so much taxes. If you do planning like this, then tax can be saved. Then all the salaries, I don't know. But they had, they, uh, my eyes, eyes are different at looking at things. So then he was very happy. So all the things we should discuss with the management. These are my absolute personal views. No, I think that's, that's kind of a value add, which as an independent director would be expected out of us as a management or as a promoters. Inab, in your thoughts around this? Yeah, 
only one thing to eat. All these informal meetings are not paid. <laughs> this <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> the only thing, yes, you will take it up to discharge your role effectively. So I think I think uh, Mukherjee, you talked about compliance, and we have been hearing this since morning. Be it from Mr. Ramesh, who said that compliance should not be a nine-to-five kind of an op job, and I liked his statement to say that compliance should be part of your DNA. And he gave a good example, saying that nine-to-five you comply, and then you move out of the room and take a scooter without a helmet. Then it, that's not right. And that was a good example which Mr. Ramesh spoke about in the morning. Or I mean, if I if take Mr. Charcher's view or Dinal Bhai's view to say that it's compliance is not about uh, documentation, but it's all about to be done in spirit, mm. kind of it. So, just wanted to uh, know your view. What are the best practices which, as an audit committee, we should follow uh, on the financial reporting and the compliance requirements for the company? See, uh the best practice, one is the continuous education. See, that is very important. Let's keep updated on the changes, on the finance reporting, that is very important. Accounting standards, that is very important. Re re regulatory requirements, changes, that, that one has to be very updated, that is very important. Now, in what I did in one of the uh, companies, uh, uh, Prince Bain, when ESG was present for the first time, for me, it was ESG was absolutely new. I was not aware of ESG. So now, the, the, our institute has started uh, the course on the ESG. But uh, friends, one thing uh, I, I ob uh, observed that ESG is more of technical aspect rather than uh, uh, auditor's aspect. Because technical things have so much involved. So I was, I was total blank. So what I requested company, that just give us presentation for three, four, five hours. Teach us. Teach us on the ESG. So separate presentation. We uh, asked them to give for ESG. Just one year back, there were so many changes in the RPT. So we asked company to give the presentation on RPT so that all the uh, other technical directors, uh, technical background or some uh, 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 other background uh, directors can understand what are the RPT trans changes are there. Then impairment in one of the companies, I request a company to give presentation on impairment because there were some issues on impairment. So that, that they, they discussed, give president of two, three hours. This outside the uh, audit committee, but this uh, for best practices, I'm, I'm saying. Changes, say with the LODR. Now LODR changes are coming. So uh, the, uh, they make present and every company, at the end of the year, I always uh, tell them, just give presentation of the recent changes in the Companies Act. Recent change in Companies Act. So all these things, we used to carry out and, and that was in detail. Now, then we can take the expert advice also. In one of the companies, uh, there was a legal battle going on. The legal department gave the opinion. We said, sir, it's uh, politely said, it's okay, fine, but this is not enough. Can we have legal opinion from a very reputed firm and no, not from the Amdad branch, but from the head office at Bombay or head office at Delhi? And then they brought the legal opinion from the expert law expert. So all these things are, are the best practices. And one, the, the institute which is known to all of you maybe, Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs. They keep the seminars, programs every now and then. One of program I also attended uh, 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 virtually. That is also very good. So all that, these are best practices for the updation of the knowledge and uh, finance reporting. Thank you, thank you, Mukesh Bhai. So I think you spoke about ESG and, and in the current scheme of things. So I'll go to Nina Ben and pick her thoughts around ESG and uh, the Gen AIs of the world, which we talk about, uh, or the, what you call, millenniums are now gone, right? The, the, the youngest one, which is coming up. What is your view and how it impacts the board members, audit committees, uh, data gathering, data presentations, et cetera? ESG has become kind of a buzzword, you know, everybody is uh, impressed with ESG reporting and ESG indices. Now, of course, you know, all of us have faced such a heavy summer that all of we have realized that importance of environment. So ESG, you all are aware, it is environment, social and governance. So all these three factors and now companies are taking a holistic view as far as ESG is concerned, because even 
uh, bankers and other investors are also looking at your ESG index, how you are performing your investment, your uh, uh, ESG reporting. And if you are, you are aware of green financing where you are getting uh, finance at a concessional rate when you are having a good ESG index, that is one thing. Secondly, you all are aware of, you must have read, uh, heard about that blood diamond, you know, now no one is purchasing, you know, those coming from uh, South Africa or Rhodesia, I suppose. So there is a great awareness, you know, especially in Western countries where they want, uh, and now of course it has been, it has come to India also, that it has to be, you know, that child labor should not be there. Uh, there has to be proper facilities. And, uh, then uh, diverse woman force should be there. So all those factors are to be considered, you know, for uh, this ESG. And it gives you a better brand image also. Secondly, when you go for these ESG uh, uh, steps, you know, it saves uh, on your cost, cost also. Like I was just observing from the top, you know, that all the bungalows surrounding this hotel are having solar panels, you know, saving substantial AC electricity cost in this hot summer. So it naturally, you know, when you are going for rain, har rain water harvesting or solar panel, you know, it reduces your cost to a great extent. Your uh, products are considered better. You have a better branding. And as Priyanshu has rightly put, that, you know, all Gen X and millennials, you know, they are interested in working with you because you have a clear image. So all those, yes, there is a favorable. And of course, one has to look at it. But generally, I feel, you know, in totality, I feel it is a old wine in new bottle. You know, if you remember, like, the one who has crossed 50, all of us were aware, you know, we were following this environmental in, right from the beginning. We used to take care of so much of water scare resources, you know, and we used to use everything. Like, now, no plastic bottles were there, just glasses, even in big conferences with uh, maybe a water jug. And now all those things have changed. Again, we are going back. This is a cycle which we have. We are following it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Nina, and thank you, Mukesh Bhai. Uh, I mean, with with your permission, can we take a couple of questions? I know we are top of the hour, but if that's okay. Yeah, yes. Nina, and yeah. Mukesh Bhai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we can take a couple of questions from the from the audience. Any questions? Yeah. Will it not be considered as uh, out of scope or conflict of interest? See, basically, we, see, when you are doing something for the betterment of the company, see, it's my duty as a director to make value addition. Now, when it is within the four walls of the law, if tax planning has to be within the four walls of law, suppose if I tell you that invest in PPF, now you are not investing in PPF, suppose I said invest in PPF, so by investing PPF, your tax goes down. Something like that. So that was on, on the merger. That was my suggestion was on merger. If you go for merger, then uh, the uh, tax would be reduced to greater extent. That was suggestion. Will it be then uh, construed to or reduced to uh, compromise in the independence of the ID? It was not Frankly indeed. speaking, no. No. to me, no, because I, I'm making value addition to a company. Because, see, if you are paying taxes which, which you should not have paid, which you should not have paid, and you have paid. So it means that if you are giving such services without getting any remuneration for that, it's okay. Because as ID, you will get the sitting fee, no, no, but for these services, these suggestions. No, no, no remuneration, no remuneration. So, yeah, so, that's, so okay. that's why it is okay. Yeah, no remuneration. No remuneration. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and see, taking remuneration, again, then it invites so many problems, because then I have to take uh, approval other things. So that money aspect, see, when you are director, then you always feel that you are much above the money. So Will it be co uh, covered under 144 of the Companies Act? I think no. It's kind of, you know, like going out of the scope as an ID, giving advices, though it is, uh, you know, like info it may not be informal because you will be giving advices in the meeting itself. See, 144 speaks about the auditor. Doesn't talk of director. So 144 is about the auditor and auditor's independence. True. Effect. And I agree there is an independent standard on independent auditors also to that effect. Maybe we can look at it offline. Yeah. But here what Mukesh Bhai was trying to say is that, of course, he found something as an. What, what he's saying, 
so i would i would i would like to flip it yeah yeah so i'll uh, correct correct so there is a so there is a flip to it saying there's an independent director if he knows that something is happening which may not be completely right i mean he has a duty bound to point it out so i would put it in that color also yeah. so i mean there there is a very thin line of difference between both and maybe we can have a chat during no, tea I, coffee i am saying his uh, things as an opportunity for the id because your sitting fee may increase by doing so i don't think so <laughs> i am an auditor i can't question on that but i mean he may i mean this is a very emotional touchy one i mean that may i mean we will have lot of people raising that point so we will keep it uh, side any one last question from the audience and then we can put it into a close anybody so that's great yeah so i think thank you mukesh bhai thank, thank you, you nina ben for your thank time thank you thank you Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. We'll end up here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Mukesh sir, Nina ma'am. for uh, uh, being part of this uh, excellent panel and excellent deliberation that you had uh, thank you priyanshu ji for moderating it so well uh, on behalf of ahmedabad branch of wrc of icai i heartily propose a vote of thanks to all the members present for uh, the entire day you have spent i think so it would have been an enriching one the session independent directors are much more in vogue these days and i think so many of them would have qualified the examination and if not it's a it's a easy examination i would say and everyone should qualify with the scope that is rising thank you so much from the entire amdavad branch team thank you so much